Boom. Hello, guys. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Hello, riders. Hello, ladies. Hello, boys. Hello, everybody who loves this sport, electric or not electric. Just the important is to us to, ask to have fun. And today we are with a very special person. She likes to ride or he likes to ride like a machine. She is always very active. I start to follow her not so long ago, but I start to see what she does and how she writes and uh, she's always don't stopping don't stopping and i think there is lots of things for us to talk about it i want to say to you thank you so much for coming to the live stream and uh, before we start everything tell us a little about you how do you start what was your first pv for us to know you a little better sure hi i'm quinn uh, my pronouns are either they them or she her um thank you so much for having me on um, yeah, this is pretty exciting. This is the first time that I've um, done any sort of interview, any, any sort of interview um, around one wheeling. But um, yeah, I, I got my first one wheel in uh, 2019. I pre ordered the pint. Uh, I had just moved to San Francisco and a coworker of mine had an XR. And she was like, Yeah, you got to check this thing out. It's so cool. Um, and she was like, Yeah, this like the the new like the small model is just about to um, is is uh, open for pre orders now. You should get one. And and so I like looked it up and I was like, Oh damn, this looks really cool. And I don't know like what ended up getting me to pull the trigger, but I ended up I ended up uh, ordering one. And um, yeah, the rest is kind of history from there. Um, <laughs> that first pint. Um, I sent it pretty hard. Uh, I was mostly just riding alone, but I would take it to the skate park and I would take it. Uh, it was mostly, mostly, I was mostly just riding it for fun because um, uh, I was commuting too far to be able to get there on the pint range. Um, but yeah, something blew up in that board. It was, I think the, the BMS got fried uh, after about <laughs> a year and a half. <laughs> um, and I, I refused. To, what's that? Well, he was not prepared for your type of riding because oh, you yeah. have nice, good <laughs> skills. <laughs> I I don't yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, at, at that point, I I wouldn't say that I was incredibly skilled, but I definitely was was sending it pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, you are always sending, and I I, I think it's important. I'm going to leave uh, uh, in a moment. I just have the Instagram, but I'm going to leave the you uh, uh, Facebook. I think she has nice. Uh, 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 uh videos small videos that the people like i think that uh, is good if you are uh in close to brooklyn you you travel uh to go to rides or you are more in uh, new york all the time um right. a bit of both yeah i um i i like to ride with um the, the group that i normally ride with is the, the brooklyn one wheel crew we, we meet up almost uh every saturday at uh, prospect park and there's some really nice trails there we've got like um our five five six mile um loop around the edge of the park um and we we've mapped out all like the best sections and stuff like that and um put them together into a nice course um but yeah i also um uh, one of my partners lives in virginia so i'm down there um some amount um and have ridden with folks down there and then um yeah whenever i'm uh traveling either specifically for one wheel stuff or just um traveling for other reasons i like to of course bring my wheel with me so i can try to hit up people wherever i happen to be yeah and uh, a question is like this uh, uh who is the person who give the inspiration for you to start in a one wheel um yeah so my coworker, after i'd moved to san francisco she she had an xr and um she was telling me all about it and she was like yeah you should check out this the, like the one wheel it's so cool um and she told me uh, that the the pint was about to be released and she was like yeah you should totally pre-order it um and i ended up doing that and uh yeah so uh thanks lexi <laughs> <laughs> thanks to her thank you thank you very much uh uh the important thing you today changing for uh, you are not just riding uh, from the pipe and now coming to the xr you have lots of modifications in your machine but uh coming from the pipe and now coming to the xr uh, do you see the big ex ex exchange for you because of your style of riding, your, how do you make your tricks and uh, the power? How was for you the changing? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so uh, so I had that, that first pint for about a year and a half before it broke. Um, and then I... Uh, I, I I wanted to either fix it myself or I mean I don't know I just I refused to send it back to Future Motion just out of principle <laughs> <laughs> so I was like okay I'm gonna try to fix this and I tried multiple times but I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it and there's you know there's not a lot of resources online um, so I ended up getting a Pint X when that came out um, after I'd moved to New York 
Um, and then, uh, so that was, yeah, what, 2022, I think I got that. Uh -huh. um, and then, uh, yeah, and then it was about a year ago um, that I started going on group rides uh, with the folks at, um, at Prospect Park. And um, I had gone, I had gone back to the Bay Area to visit some friends in San Francisco and uh, had gone on a float addicts ride and got to borrow someone's um, XR down there. And I was like, oh, oh damn. Yeah. Like the first two th things that I realized was like, number one, I suck at writing because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all of my experience was on a pint with flight fins and, and I'd gotten really good at writing a pint with flight fins. But um, I I gotten the flight fins like pretty much within like a month of getting the board originally. So like all of the skills that I had learned had been like reliant on the flight fins. Um, so there's definitely like, you know, it, I, I think the, the fins definitely helped me pick up uh, like gain confidence more quickly, but I think they definitely at some point became a hamper where I was like not, I hadn't ever really had to focus on just like riding the board without without uh, footholds. So um, yeah, so and the, so that that was the first thing that I noticed, and the other thing was like, oh damn, like I see why all these guys are talking about like how the big boards are so much cooler because it's like I don't know, there's just like so much more f foot real estate and. And just the the increase in 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 like power and range and stuff and so um and also at that point I'd, i had been starting to hear more about vesk and uh I, that that was super intriguing for me because i have always like I, I've, I've always loved working with electronics um my my dad had a home uh, stereo equipment company mm -hmm. and he taught he taught uh, me how to solder as a kid and so i was like you know i was always like dabbing in electronics and stuff i was i was, I was like this is perfect like I can like do electronics and one wheeling, like two of my favorite things and stick them together. Um, so yeah, so then I was like, okay, cool. This is great. I'll get an XR and vest it. Um, and then that's what I did. So I don't know, um, like I really haven't ridden that much stock XR. Um, it's it, so yeah, I basically just went from the Pinex directly to uh, wow. a vest XR. Um, I see, I see you with the, con I, I see you with the, uh, the control. Uh, do you use the data control in your VESC or it was just a, a, a training? I see you one time, I think I have the video from you trying or playing with the control from the, yeah, I have it here. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Let's okay. put it here. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that you like or it was just a test? Um, no, yeah, I, I really like riding with the remote. It's, I, I, I use it only in certain scenarios. Um, so the, the yeah the, the remote for on a on a on a Vesk one wheel um it, it's not like a an e skate where the remote controls the speed um but the remote controls the the tilt of the board um so I I mostly use it on trails um uh because yeah I j just like having that additional uh, control over like the set point of the board is like incredibly helpful especially if you have a trail that has a lot of transitions from like downhill to uphill. Um, or if there's just like a lot of obstacles or a lot of, yeah, just, I, I'm mostly just the quick transitions. Um, but being able to like manually adjust the set point, um, it is, is really nice. And, um, you know, it's basically like if, if we're looking at ATR or, um, terrain response, um, that is, you know, where the, the, uh, the board senses the amount of torque that is being applied for the given speed. Um, and it, and so then it can tell whether you're going uphill or downhill, and then it can adjust the set point automatically. Um, but both of those things, um, ATR and VESC and, uh, train response in, in the one wheel firmware, um, they're both responsive, um, right. So they, they like, it can't predict what type of train you're going to be going up. Um, it can only react to once you're already going up a hill. Um, so especially for quick transitions, like you, you're coming down a hill, and then ATR will kick in and, and lower the nose. Um, and so you have more tail clearance going down, great. But then you get to like the bottom of the valley and then you start going up and um, ATR doesn't have enough time to react. And so then um, not only are you not level, like you're going, the no nose is pointed down and you're trying to then climb up an, a new hill. Um, so with the tilt remote, then you can, um, you know, you're seeing the terrain in front of you. And so then you can, you can adjust the level of the board before you actually get to that transition. Uh, so you can maintain your speed a lot, a lot more through, through different sections like that. 
Yeah, that is a, a good thing. Uh, for you uh, coming to the Vesk world, uh, uh, is that change your uh, vision of the one wheel for the type of riding that you like? Mm. Uh, in terms of type of riding, um, I don't think it's really changed the type of riding I like to do uh, all that much. Um, I mean, I think I think you know anything that's possible to ride on a Vesk is also possible to ride on a one wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be more difficult in certain situations, um, but it's I think the um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So that I think the type of riding isn't affected as much by Vesk versus stock um, for me, but definitely my vision of the one wheel and like what it means to me and the possibilities have completely changed. Um, now that I've gotten uh, into Vesk, um, because with a stock one wheel, um, I don't know. Like you know, I've I've always like worked on my own vehicles, like cars, motorcycles, whatever Ooh, it is, bicycles. <laughs> um, and oof, we're going yeah. to come later on to this one, but yeah, uh, but uh, uh, continue, please. Sorry. Okay. I think everybody needs to see a little from your videos. I think it's important. If you are, okay. are out there and you're going to see the videos later on or this interview, you just go there. I think you are just seeing all the videos for Instagram or in Facebook. I think there is lots of stuff, good stuff, uh, uh, not so good stuff like this one. <laughs> but I think we learn with them, with the with the mistakes. Uh, yeah. But continue to having. I, I'm just showing a little from your point uh, what you was starting. That way the people know you a little better. Okay. Please. Sounds and, good. Yeah. And my um, question is like, my, my question is, okay, like, yeah, I'm, go going to put it, uh, I'm going to put it like this. You are a person who, I see that you ride off-road. I see that you like to, you, of course, you live in New York. Uh, then you have lots of streets and, uh, but I see that you are a person who likes a lot to make tricks. That is something mm -hmm. I see. You like to move your feet a lot. I, we, that we I, we don't see, and most of the riders that, and uh, most of the riders do some 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 things. But when they do a jump or something like that, the the feet don't move move to a lot, and you move yourself a lot in your tricks. And uh, uh, most of your videos, you always try to make changes and uh, creating new stuff. And uh, you are always with a nice crew too. Uh, for you, what is what you like more? Uh, tricks, off-road, street, what is your type of style? Or is a, a mix of everything together? Yeah, that's a tough question. Um, I, I mean, definitely a mix, uh, but I think, I, I mean, I, th I think, you know, part, partly like you, you touched on, like since I live in New York, we don't have a lot of trails that are super accessible. Um, I mean, you know, if, if I hopped in the car, I'm sure I could get to some, some, but that kind of defeats the purpose for me. I'm, I'm just like, I want to walk down the stairs, hop on my board and just like go have an adventure. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I really, I really do like trail riding. Um, and like the more, like in, in the past, I don't know, year or six months, something like that, I've, I've definitely gotten to ride a lot more different types of trails and stuff like that. Um, at Float Life Fest and at, at Stoke Bird down in Florida. Um, mm -hmm. but uh yeah i mean i think i mean definitely the thing that like i always come back to it's like even even after like riding trails at prospect park for like a couple battery charges um i'm like okay time to hit the streets i i, I love cruising I, I love i love like i love little features i love like trying to find lines um i mean also the skate park too i feel like yeah skate it, i don't know it's it's also fun to me it's it just like depending on what mood i'm in and um and <laughs> and yeah who I'm, who I'm riding with that is the good thing you are uh you are a person who likes to ride uh, most of the time with uh, just with one wheelers or you you because you are in a big city a city that is lots of people types of pvs is one of the big cities for lots of people who don't know is one of the cities who start the pvs was the beginning was everything there electro skateboards uh aucs uh new york is well known about uh, uh the big start of the pv world and uh, there is lots of good riders there in new york you are more one wheel uh, always riding or you go to group rides and uh, uh, rides with the riders in New York or not so much yeah um yeah I've been to a couple more like general PEV rides um, and I definitely have had a good time with those but I think I think 
for me, the more exciting thing is to ride with other one wheelers. Um, I think I think partially just because um, the I mean I mean yeah the, the one wheel is a pretty unique uh, device when it comes to the capabilities and like what um, you know like I, I think I think it's like from an outsider who's like not familiar with one wheeling, like you see some some of the tricks that like we're doing on one wheels and like someone who's used to watching people do tricks on like BMX bikes or something, they're like, what's so cool about that? Right. Cause it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't like look nearly as, as impressive as it feels. Um, and so I think, I think part of like why I like riding with other one wheelers is like, you know, we're all on the same page about like what the capabilities of this device are and what things are hard and what things are easy. Um, and so it's like, it, it, I, it it feels like we can just we can like appreciate each other's writing a lot more than than people that are on like EUCs or on e skates or something like that that like don't have as much familiarity with one wheel. Um, but you know, again, I I definitely do like the the sort of like big um, like the big crowd energy of like the bigger rides and stuff like that. So yeah, a mix of both. But I'd say that riding with other one wheelers is is um is my favorite. And I think too. So you are a a, a person who ride uh sometimes alone try to test test yourself to the limit or you just use it more as a group ride as you always have to be with somebody riding uh no i'd say that most of the time i'm riding alone um i <laughs> yeah um i, I mean like you me. know the, yeah <laughs> um yeah, I, I I love going on like big solo one wheel adventures. Um, the like you, oftentimes I'll go meet up with the group of prospects and do a couple loops. Um, you know, so, and and those usually take us about an hour to do a full loop. Um, so you know, a couple hours at the park, and then usually people have to split off. Um, and but then I'm just like, yeah, I'm just gonna keep riding all day, just like see how many miles I can get in. So then I'll. I'll go from there and and like head down uh towards the Verrazano bridge or like down around to the south of brooklyn or um a couple uh, i mean i guess it was a couple months ago at this point i did a nice ride like up through manhattan and over through queens um and yeah I, th that was that was my longest ride i did uh, 60 miles in a day that was Ooh. that was uh, i was super stoked to hit that what battery new. are you using what's that oh oh that so that was after the um uh, cause I, I built a new battery for my uh -huh. XR Vesk, uh, in January. So it's a uh -huh. 18 S two P 50 S pack. Um, so the same as Mario's meat pack in terms of cells. Uh -huh. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, in theory, 20% yeah, range. more range than a GT. Um, yeah, yeah. and I was maintaining like 18, 20 miles an hour average through that, through most of those sections. And I was able to get, um, over 20 miles of range out of a what, single what charge. What cells are you using? Uh, the Samsung 50 S. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm using. I have the twenty S S to two P. Cool. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So I got it's in an eighteen S two P configuration. So, yeah, but I'm a big guy. <laughs> I'm a big guy. I need more. And now yeah. we are. Uh, 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 now we are planning to make a thirty S one P for racing. Thirty S one P. Nice. 20, one hundred twenty-five volts. I think one hundred twenty-six volts is yeah around that. I think it's more on that. Cool. But because you know that in Europe is uh, you you talk in the beginning. We are not here to talk about uh, future motion. I just want to say to hello to everybody is coming. I was having an issue with uh, Facebook. Now we are sharing all the channels and everybody is coming. Uh, we are in Facebook. We are in X uh, X or Twitter. How do you want to call it? And we are in YouTube. Uh, everything is free. You can take it out. We are having a, a very special question. Uh, 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 a very special guest here talking about what we love one wheeling and she has a vesk and she is a machine riding and uh I, we have lots to learn from her <laughs> that is the beautiful thing is and she is from new york and uh thank you guys for everybody to, who, who is coming now to the live if you have any questions leave there in the comments and we're going to try to answer to them uh if not enjoy it have a good time and i think that is going to be fun because she is amazing i put the small video just a small clips from you there because i'm following and she can she can she can play the the the, the guitar i was seeing the the less the <laughs> so everybody's going to go to event knows that it's going to be music but talking about events 
uh, I, I listened that you got gone to some events uh, for you coming to this big events now that you in USA you have lots of big events uh, how was the sensation how was for you how can you describe it what happened in this event for us to know a little yeah. more because we are jealous of you <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah I uh I the the first the first um, one wheel event that I had uh, like big one wheel event I had gone to um, was Float Life Fest last fall. Um, I had been you know hearing about Float Life Fest and the other festivals um, since probably 2019 or 2020 when I first got that original pint. Um, and after I started following people on Instagram, and they're all like, "Oh yeah, Float Life Fest!" And I was like, "Oh, that sounds so cool! I want to do that." And then now that I'm on the East Coast, like like this, I, I guess it was yeah, it was really about a year ago when I first got that. Um, I first got, do it, uh, started doing group rides and got the XR invest for that. I sort of like had given myself permission to be like, "Okay, this is this is like one wheeling is something that I know I'm gonna like." for a long time because you know sometimes it's like those things where you, you get into a new hobby you get a new special interest and it's like well you know i'm really into this right now but i'm not sure how this how long this is going to last um before i like you know something else catches my interest and um but but yeah i mean at that point i'd, I'd been riding on and off for like three four years and um i was like yeah this is like you know i I love this so much. This is just going to be a part of my life for a long time. So I'm like allowing myself to start like spending more money on upgrades and like going to events and stuff like that. So today you um, have a beautiful one. Just to see <laughs> the photo just for the for everybody to know. What yeah. settings do you have today? Uh, in terms of upgrades or or vest uh, everything. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, everything. Okay. Uh, for everybody yeah, to yeah. know, a little propaganda for the people. And <laughs> the... <laughs> sure thing. yeah. So so this um uh yeah let me i got the reels it. yeah bring it here then it's better we don't need to, to look at the picture let me just change let's Sweet. do it awesome yeah so this is um uh xr platform it's on a it's running vesk um i uh, i was on uh, ubox and uh, ubox 80 volt and the stock xr pack when i first converted this board uh, but then uh, in January this year, I built myself a new pack, um, 18S2P. Uh, so it's a 75 volt pack running Samsung 50S cells. Uh, so it's the same as Mario's meat pack. Uh, and then up front, um, now I have a Thor 300 from Fungineers. And um, yeah, I still got the Hypercore in here. I've got a Superflex V2 uh, high torque um, in the. I like the motor. I like the motor in the like gt that. over there that i'm working Ooh. on um Ooh. but i might push that over here because um i i had just uh yeah okay let me let me pause there and go through the the other okay. uh, the other yeah. uh, stuff right here so for the rails we've got the um uh float life uh variables and these are this is the uh the original wtf centers so the the curvy mm -hmm. wtfs um bang bumpers of course uh stock front foot pad right now mm -hmm. got the cush wide on the back Oh yeah, um, that's good. And then right now, orange. what's that? I have in orange. Oh, nice, excellent. Um, yeah, and then um, I got the right now. I got the old uh, enduro on here, so this is the older. Do you like it? Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I love, I love both the enduros, but um, mm -hmm. the the new enduro is is uh, significantly smaller than the old one. Um, and I, I I've I've run both of them, um, and I like the profile on the on the new enduro a bit better it's like it's it's easier to recover from upsets because it's like a more round profile um but i i like the the size of the old one it's like right now it's i got a flat but unfortunately but um there's just a lot more sidewall on, on the old one compared to the new one um but yeah i'm probably gonna switch it up here soon um do you ever then, try it do you ever try it with a big tire uh yeah so uh, i'm just starting to dabble into that um let me put this down. Getting heavy. Yeah, we have to go to this uh, uh, GT too. I want to see that the GT too. Oh yeah, yeah. And you um, have to tell me what you are upgrading. That is very interesting. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. Yeah. But so for the big tire, um, I just helped. Uh, I the, the, a couple of uh, of us on uh, from in working on Vesk stuff. Um. Uh, I don't know if it, have you uh, have you met Auden yet from uh, Pub Wheel? Uh, no, that is a he's a 
Uh, he, he's doing Send a lot of um, CAD design work. Sends okay. me the link later on. Maybe I can invite her to come here. Sure. It's always yeah, yeah. always good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He 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 runs um the the Pubwheel Discord server um and he he does a lot of work for um like the the basically like open source uh, publicly shared um mm -hmm. design files so that people can make their own components like get get them CNC'd. Mm -hmm. Um. So I'm uh yeah I I worked with him and a, a couple other guys in that server and um we designed some. Uh, like small batch um, uh, uh, varial centers. So we we took we got the uh, design from the Functioners X10 rails mm -hmm. and then made them into varial centers. Um, so I'm Ooh. super excited about that because those are on the way. And then I'm got I've got the um, Burris 12 by 8 tire coming. So that's going to be a really big one. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not sure if I'm I. I that that threw all of my build plans in 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 midair because I, I was going to make the XR into the trick board and the GT into the trail board, <laughs> uh, but now that I've got the extended centers for the XR and the big tire, I'm like, okay, now I got to do an XR <laughs> big tire build for the trail, and then I really want, I guess, I would want another XR for trick, and then maybe the <laughs> GT becomes the commuter board. I don't know. There's all you know. There's there's too much. You there's, know. Uh, I, I'm going to tell you, like I see you. I see you like us who love the one wheel. Uh, the explanation for the one wheelers is very difficult. And uh, what the people don't understand is now coming to the open source. The VESC has opened the, the world for all of us. Yeah. The, and uh, that is not most of the people I know, like you. I see that now I'm understanding that you have, you are one of the persons who have to help your friends. Uh, <laughs> and you are one of the persons who are always uh, taking care of the boards. Like yeah. us, we have here uh, lots of persons like me. I'm a, I ride the vest, but I don't know a lot. And I always have to ask to my friends. <laughs> Ooh, let me see what you have there. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So I, w one of my favorite things to do now. Um, I mean, of course, riding, but also I've been uh, doing a lot of vest conversions. Um, so I, I think this is my seventh board that um, I'm working on converting. I've done. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Let me just take this out because I want to show it. That's. Oh that yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. So this is this is a, a, a pint build. Um. Uh. And yeah. So it's uh. Got a Ooh. U box hundred hundred volt in there, and the Ava Spark RGB controller, and then um, I modified uh or redesigned that is this. The, uh, that is a pint or the pint S X. Uh, this is a pint, but the, the okay. conversion process for the pint and the pint X okay. are, are basically the same. I have yeah. um I have my Vesked Pine X right over there. Yeah. yeah. The, lots of people like here the, the, the Pint X and they update it for the uh, uh Vesk and they love it to, to play with the Pint X yeah. as Vesk. They say that is amazing <laughs> because it's not so uh, heavy and you can do I, I think it's uh, something that I'm very interested to. And I'm a big guy. <laughs> yeah. And for you to play it, I think it's fantastic. If you make good updates, uh, the day that you are in that, uh, uh, we are seeing now we are changing to the volts a lot. Uh, what do you think is going to be the future of the not the one wheel but the open source? Yeah, um, that's a really good question. I mean, I think I think um, th I mean the the battle between between like whether to have more volts or to have uh, more cells in parallel to get um, mm -hmm. higher amperage draw from the battery, uh, I think I think the the general consensus is that like that at least two p is is like a two p configuration. Like let's say you have room for thirty cells in your battery box, like a fifteen s two p two p is going to be a better overall battery than a 30 S one P um, mostly because of the uh, with, with a higher P count, then you can draw more amps from the battery and the uh, amount of amps that you can send both the motor and draw from the battery is going to um, determine a lot more of um, the low speed torque that you can get out of the board. Um, so, you know, the, the GTS um, can go really fast and it has a lot of torque at high speed um, because of the high cell count high voltage, but uh, it still is pretty lacking in the in the low low speed torque 
um, mm -hmm. uh, range. And so something like uh, the float wheel, even though it's um, significantly lower voltage than the GTS, like still has a lot more low end torque because it has the um, uh, 2P battery. So you can pull more uh, battery amps. And then it also has a beefier motor connector. So you can push more amps through into the motor. Um, so I think, I mean, I think it'll be interesting because like, you know, we've seen with, with Stanley's uh, GT build from the VAL, um, that like a 24S, 2P, 50S, uh, pack, split pack, like mm -hmm. that, you know, easily get over 30 miles of range. Um, and that's uh, hundred volt. So, you know, that's, that's getting up there. It's like between GT and GTS range in terms of voltage. Um, and you know, that thing has more than enough top speed. So I think really anything over, I mean, at, at this point, I would say anything over 24 S is, is a little bit extra. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. like I think you'd probably be better off to, to run like a 24 S 2 P or even a 20 S 2 P than you would mm -hmm. to run a 27 or 30 S 1 P. But, um, the, I mean, to, it is to race to, to race to. Do you think if you I mean, want I to think... race in so, like just to use it for a race? Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? I I think I think that really depends on what type because of because it's the weight being done. Because like, you know, for ORL, we've seen a lot of like basically downhill mountain bike courses, mm -hmm. which is interesting because they get really high speeds, right? And and that's like fun and exciting to watch. But but it's really kind of it doesn't really play into the strong suits of a one wheel. Like, you know, mm -hmm. You're going down a hill. Why do you need a motor? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and obviously, yeah, know you know, that. like we, you know, we can. Th there's a lot of like, it, it's really fun riding a one wheel down a hill. Like that's that's awesome, mm -hmm. and it's and it's fun to watch. But I think that like, for a lot of racing that isn't ORL, like there's a lot more uphill. There's a lot more flat ground, um, and so like, top speed isn't nearly as important in some type of racing as it is in others. Um, and I think, you know, having that low end torque to be able to get up to speed quickly is going to be at least as beneficial in most, if not all cases, than having like an extreme top end would, because unless you're racing like really flat ground, unless you're racing like on the street or like single track uh, with like mm -hmm. very little obstacles, like you're not really going to be able to push the speed that you would like like even you know even on that 24s that Val built um mm -hmm. like they were hitting s speeds of over 35 miles an hour <laughs> and and like you know i i don't really foresee racing needing to go much faster than that in, unless we're that talking was my next question <laughs> yeah that was my next question do, yeah do you think we are coming to the limit of the one wheel as a uh, uh, terms of speed because we are talking about 33 34 uh, miles per hour that is a lot in a one wheel i i don't i i definitely don't think we're coming to the limit i i think we're coming to the practical limit but we're definitely not coming to what's going to be pushed <laughs> like I, I i have no doubt that we're going to see people going 50 miles an hour on a one wheel within the next year yeah, um, but you like, think that is the safety point we're talking about mm -hmm. everything putting together you understand I, yeah, I, I I was riding with my AUC. Uh, I know that maybe you know the Vesk man is the guy here in Europe, and mm -hmm. he's a, a fast rider. And uh, I was riding in my AUC, and he was in, with his Vesk, and he came to close to fifty uh, fifty six kilometers per hour is around thirty four, uh, 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 and he was not pushing to the limit. And uh, I was seeing the board was like flying. Yeah, and I feel safe in my AUC to go to that speeds, but in a one wheel, I I think I know that we're going to go to the more than that in the future because voltage and everything, and everybody wants to have the the record. Everybody wants to have uh, doesn't matter. Everybody wants to upgrade and put it something else there. Uh, don't you think uh, the one wheel was not made for that? For this top speeds was more like you was talking about trails, going downhill, going, uh, having fun, having this torque, not the power there for speed, because one wheel is not the one thing for speed. It's more one thing for you to have fun, make tricks, uh, go downhill. You have that speed that you can have it, but you have the torque. And seeing the one wheel going in trails, you're never going to go to uh, 34 miles per hour in a small uh, trails is difficult for you to catch that speeds. Mm. And if, we have to know if that is what we're going to see in the future. I know that we're going to see it. We see Nico, we see lots of kids who are doing now and they are pushing a lot. Uh, 
And uh, sometimes I look to these guys and I say, wow, they are putting <laughs> this in a limit. Uh, uh, for you as a, a builder, uh, uh, as a person who has a knowledge about uh, the future, Mario is uh, 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 there uh, working a lot for that, for the communities. Do you see in the last close to one year, we see the big change from the one wheel? Because before it was just one wheel, today we have open source. And the open mm -hmm. source is a lot of big persons working because we don't give, give no compliment to these persons. The one wheel is today in this stage, future motion is in this stage. He has to think about the open source, about the VESCs, because they say we have to push this. When everybody knows the GT was with the uh, 56 volts, I think, around? Uh, 63 volts for the XR and then, uh, and then 75 volts for the GT. The maximal. Yeah, the, the, the uh, on a full charge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then we see now they are. Uh, uh, now we are seeing float wheel is there. Uh, of course, they want to shut it now. I think uh, it's very sad for us to see persons trying to. How do you see the float wheel? Do you try it? Yeah, I've gotten to try. I got to try Nico's float wheel at um, Float Life Fast, uh, mm -hmm. and then I got to try a couple other float wheels down at Stokebird in uh, February. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think it's uh, the float. I mean, a fantastic Logic. board. Yeah, it's it's really. I mean, it's a really a fantastic board, especially for a first, basically a first gen product. I mean, you know, Tony had the the pint version of the float wheel out before, but this was pretty much the first foray into when they shut um, them out. That yeah, is the problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, because no, lots of people don't know that the, uh, that is already the third generation of the. He is not a, a person who started yesterday doing uh, parts and uh, building. Uh, he has a long way, a long history, and a long battle against uh, future motion. That is not from today. That is for everybody who don't know, and uh, is hard for him, always. Yeah, but you seeing this this big machine is not a bad 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 machine. It's a big machine. I know that he's going to bring some new things to the table, new machines. I think he wants to make a a two like a, a old XR model. That's what I understand in an interview with Max. Uh, let's see what happens. Uh, I think he's going to bring new stuff to the table. But you think the float wheel was something that helped a lot to the community? Um, yeah, so I mean, I guess let, let me just back up for a sec. Um, mm -hmm. with the, the new stuff, yeah, um, the uh, uh, the GTV kit and the um, and then later on the XRV and I, I think maybe the Pint V kit, um, are, are the 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 kits that Tony's planning on releasing. I think we've, we've got some GTV kits out in, in testing right now, which is super exciting to see. Mm -hmm. Um, but those are yeah, basically just the, the float wheel electronics in a drop in package that you can just throw in your existing GT. Um, and then convert it to a VESC without having to do any of the electronics work yourself. Um, and I think I think I think that that's you know the the area where um, float wheel really shines is as an alternative for people that just want to ride and that you know either don't want to or don't have the experience to build their own VESC um, because you know you can you can get you could build a, a, a vesk for cheaper and one that like suits your needs better than a float wheel but um that is really reliant on the uh, it's dependent on on the skills that you have and um and your experience with electronics work and and the tools that you have and stuff and so um i think that it's really fantastic to see options for vesk boards that you can just go out and buy um and it, it's definitely unfortunate right now that um that future we motion is there is putting so much pressure on them that um uh that that yeah i mean th that you can only get them through bitcoin right now but um i mm -hmm. think i think uh hopefully we'll we'll be able to see some more fair competition in the future <laughs> hopefully do, do you do do you think oh, okay first uh, i just want to say uh, because of the sensors there is a new pattern that uh they say that uh, the sensors uh it uh, hurt them and uh, because they have the you have to buy it in other way now because you cannot buy it like before because they say they have the pattern for the two sensors inside but i'm seeing new stuff like uh like uh, uh 
you can put your feet on the back and then you have this sensor is going to catch you just you don't have to have the the sensor on your feet you just have to have the on the back of your board then it sensor your feet and it's going to yeah it's a new thing uh, oh. lots of guys are, are using then you don't need n any more the sensor on your feet you have the sensor is like a, a is it a, the lidar sensor that yeah yeah, yeah. Rails is testing yeah yes I think that is a good idea. Let's see how that works in the future. Is I think that has lots of to improve. I see some guys here in Europe uh, trying that and is uh, working very well. Sweet. And uh, let's see how that goes. Uh, I, I think the the biggest problem uh, for us. Uh, that's why it's good for me to ask you like this. The big problem we have is future motion as this, the easy way. You just go plug it in and ride it. And it's easy for you to go in a website and you just change something. Do you think that is in the future very soon? That is one question that I have for most of the riders who don't have so much knowledge about vesking uh, and going to the settings. Do you think that is something that we're going to see in the future? Uh, maybe uh, a web that is going to be easy for us just to go there and just plug it in and uh, is going to ride it? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I think you nailed it with the, um, like, right now, the, I think the hardest part of getting into VESC is just the, like, the really large knowledge gap that is required to, to, like, get a, a base understanding of, like, what is even happening, because, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. like, it's not like VESC one wheels are that much more complicated than future motion. It's just that there's like so many new terms and so many abbreviations and so many mm -hmm. new companies to be aware of and like all these different technologies. And um, yeah, and so it can be pretty intimidating. I, I remember like a year ago before I had started vesking, I was like, I don't even know like what <laughs> controller to get. Like I'm seeing like, I'm like the U-Box is half the price of the Fokker, but like, I don't see any people talk like, like, like why would I not get the U-Box? It seems like for half the price. And, but everyone was like, no, get the Fokker. And I'm like, why? And they're like, I don't know. It's just better. And I'm like, what do you mean it's better? And so I ended up getting the U-Box. Um, but I don't know. It's just stuff like that, where it's like, you know, you, you really, it's like a really it, like the, the tier, the, the level that you need to like get started is, is just like a lot more commitment to, like researching and learning and 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 um like yeah just all, all of the intuitness and i love the names yeah. huh i love the names what they put the, the yeah. little fucker <laughs> if you are in the streets <laughs> and you are talking with friends i was there last week in in a float italia and we was uh traveling and we was talking about uh, the the fuckers <laughs> and stuff like that and there is so much and we say well, if we are in the street and we start to talk about controllers and everything and you put the names the people are thinking other things that we are talking about and we're just talking about the controller and lots of stuff like that i think that is interesting i think there's lots of controllers there out there uh, new controllers I, I think it's going to come lots of new controllers. I think it's good for the safety, uh, for you to go to the limits uh, 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 a little more, and for the safety of all of us. Uh, I think it's important. Um, you, uh, as a person, now that you are building, how many pe uh, people contact you every day and say, "Can you uh, take care of my wheel? I have this problem. I have that problem. I have." this small problem and sometimes it's so easy stuff that you say oh why don't you try to fix it uh lots of people contact you to for you to take care of all the um, machines from them yeah n not not a whole lot it's definitely not a daily occurrence or even a weekly occurrence um but uh yeah i mean i've started to i've started to build more mostly doing work with vasks conver converting boards for friends um uh yeah i've done i think three pints and two xr no more than that four four pints and three xrs i guess um yeah yeah um and then working on this gt back here mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean at, at this point I, I mean i don't know i i guess like the thing that i struggle with is like I, I really like as much as i would love to just like be able to build one wheels like for a living and just do mm -hmm. that every day like that that would be fantastic oh my god but but also like i don't know i i don't think i want to like let capitalism ruin that for me mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I know. as, as soon perfectly. as it becomes a job then it just steals all of the fun out of it and so i yes, like yes, yes. yeah and so far it's so so i'm mostly just like keeping it kind of chill and being like okay cool like you know i'll 
and, and you know most of the boards that i've converted i've just done for free for friends because i'm just like yeah like you know you, you've got but a that's board the problem we start to do it for friends and then uh, everybody uh, start to contact you and everybody yeah. starts to say okay uh, i have this problem oh contact uh, uh, queen she can take care of you <laughs> oh yeah. we have that problem oh she knows it how to fix it and most of the times i know that you do that for uh, uh helping your friends your riders and uh, uh and uh that uh, i think that is not uh, uh, what we are thinking as you making a business is something that you are doing for the love to i know that the people who works in that like you i understand i see that you have lots of passion doing this stuff and creating and uh, upgrading and uh, putting new stuff out for the safety of the riders most of the time lots of people don't know you are are, are trying to create more safety for us to ride and uh, uh, that is the beautiful uh, of everything and uh, i hope that you can in new york is like whew. but I don't want to stick because this is more like you. I think that is important for the people to know you a little more. I don't want to continue with the vest. I think that is nice. I think that I have a nice upgrade, but I want to talk about you. You was talking we we stop in uh, in the uh, in the fest uh, life fest. You talk about that. You see lots of people there riding. Mm -hmm. uh, I I see you together with lots of ladies uh, that we don't see in this sport. And uh, we are seeing more and more good riders coming to this sport. We have the champion of the uh, 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 float uh, 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 future motion, and she she already win two times. She is a, a beast. Yeah, so. She do, she don't she don't give no chance. And <laughs> we are seeing lots of good riders coming. Uh, uh, I was the, for you to be together with all of them riding with all of these ladies and I was a sensation. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it, it was fantastic. Like that, that was one of my favorite parts about Float Life Fest was just like, I, I, I guess, so yeah, backing up a little bit, like m most of the group rides that um, I go on are like, you know, there's a lot of men out of the group rides. Um, and I, you know, I, I like riding with everybody, but um, it's, it was really fantastic to get to like, yeah, show up at Float Life Fest and like meet a bunch of pe other people that I'm like, wow, like, you know, not only are these people that I like riding with, but these are also like people that I could like see myself like being good friends with outside of just riding. <laughs> um, and so I think, you know, being able to like have that additional connection, like with other with other ladies, with other queer riders, um, with other people that like share interests outside of one wheeling too. It's just like, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's pretty special to be like, oh, cool. Like, you know, I'm like, making new you are always friends. smiling you are always <laughs> happy you are doing tricks you are doing lots of stuff i i, I start to uh, to see your videos i start to see all the stuff from you and uh, i was uh, impressed how you do everything and you are doing with lots of love and mm -hmm. uh, you you are not caring about the people around you uh, you are just having fun having a good time and uh, with your friends and uh, I think that is more than important for the, when you go ride. That's what I think the people don't understand, the one wheeling. Why do you make the, why do you ride one wheel? Because you have so many persons around you uh, that love the same sport like you. And uh, uh, is you have that smile all the time? <laughs> <laughs> um not all the time for sure but most of the time when i'm riding yeah like that yeah that's that's one of my favorite things about one wheeling is just like it's it, it yeah it's just like it brings me such joy um i i just i i love it it feels amazing to ride it it's like you know it's nice to get out and it gets me to meet people it takes me to like new places that i wouldn't have seen um i mean yeah it's like i don't know it's it i mean i think it at this point it's almost a cliche within within the one wheel community but it's like it really has completely changed my life um and uh actually yeah let me let me r read you this this thing that i um had written uh a yeah, friend had asked, uh, a friend had asked um they were like oh yeah i'm like my friend is is thinking about getting a one wheel like um do you have any words that that uh you want to say to describe like what one wheeling means to you um all right so um fun uh, one wheel has made me so much more active. I go out and ride way more than I ever did with any other sport. It's so consistently fun and easy to initiate a ride, unlike a lot of other sports that require a ton of planning slash prep slash gearing up. 
Uh, there's zero zero barriers to starting a ride with a one wheel. Any season, any weather, any time of the day, it's always a blast. And it's easy to adapt riding style to however much energy I have. Days when I'm hyped, I can go on a ride for 50 plus miles and sweat up a storm. Days that I'm feeling burnt out, I can do a nice chill night ride around town without exerting too much energy. Um, second is commuting. Uh, so one wheel has completely changed my relationship with going places because it turns the commute into an event in and of itself. If someone bails on me last minute or the venue sucks or an event gets canceled, it doesn't really bother me anymore because uh, I just got a sick ride in. <laughs> also, <laughs> just the complete freedom of getting anywhere in the city anytime without having to worry about the train schedules or traffic or parking or commute time. Um, and the commute time is always consistent. I have a ton of fun uh, little interactions with people on the street. Whenever I go to places, I get some fresh air, show up feeling more refreshed than when I left, unlike being stuck in a car. Also, the fact that I have both hands free uh, while I'm riding means that I can eat a snack or have a drink or carry some bags of groceries or whatever. Uh, community. I've met so many rad people through one wheeling that I never would have met otherwise, both other one wheelers, but also strangers that ask me about the board or just people out in the wild that I run into because of the places I go on rides. It's great. I love making new friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then lastly, uh, mental health. There is nothing else that I found besides um, maybe drugs or uh, relationships <laughs> mm -hmm. that is so consistently good at uh, getting me into a good headspace. Um, there's the physical activity part and the getting out of my house part. But I think that one of the biggest factors is when, when I'm one wheeling, I have no choice but to narrow my focus on the present moment and the road in front of me. And so it's a lot easier to set everything else aside. And the feeling of riding a one wheel is like a full body stim. It's so nice and relaxing. Also, uh, now that I've gotten so into one wheeling, it's become a core part of who I am, which is really nice because when shit is hitting the fan and other aspects of my life, I can always at least count on the fact that I have that one solid pillar of hope slash identity slash joy to hold on to. Very so nice, huh? About one wheeling. So, and uh, for you, uh, I want to tell you something. I want to, I want to tell that sometimes I tell to everybody and sometimes because you put that and I think that is important. I have a very difficult job. I'm a cook mm -hmm. and I work lots of hours. And the only thing I, when I come out for my work because I don't want to see nobody, I don't want to have nothing. I just want to be alone. And uh, when I stop, when I start, uh, uh, when I start, wait, I, I changed it. When I start, uh, Oh, no, I was just trying to get my camera to focus. Sorry. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Uh, when I start with the PVs around, uh, I don't know how many years, that the motor was bigger than the the, the skateboarder. Uh, that was the only thing I found to relax myself and uh, forget about my problems and uh, forget about sometimes emotions that we have in the work. And uh, sometimes when I found the one wheel before the AUC, I changed it. I was a skateboarder, a electro skateboarder. I changed it to the one wheel. And the one wheel was like, not for me having speeds, was for me to have fun. And uh, I was having the best time of my life. And uh, I recommend to everybody, if you have a shitty job or mm -hmm. you're having problems, try to find the day you have, you're finding internet in second hand, lots of good stuff. And uh, I think there is lots of groups there out there. Doesn't matter if it's a UC one wheel or a, uh, a skateboard. I always try, try to tell to everybody: go to these groups, rides, and ask if you can try it before you buy it. That way, you can see what is better for you. Because sometimes you buy something that has nothing to do with you, and later on you expend the money because it's not so uh, cheap. You have to have you have to think the batteries coming, everything, all the components are, are expensive. And uh, yeah. I always tell: try it. Just try it and uh, sometimes just for you to have a little fun and to forget the problems we have. I don't want to say other word. Yeah, but uh, sometimes we need that, that space for us. And uh, like I always tell, we lose friends. I lose a friend uh, around one year because he don't want to talk and he was a writer. And uh, if you are out there, you have a problem, you always have people around you can help you. And uh, just go for a nice ride. Enjoy your life. Doesn't matter how you enjoy it. Just have fun. And if you're not good to have fun, go to your friends and believe it. They're going to take care of you. And when you see you are already smiling and having a good time. And uh, uh, for me, it's always a positive thing for 
that and uh, don't forget the time we are here we have to enjoy it and uh, we never know what can happen tomorrow just think about today and do something good for you and for the others around you and always try to be positive and that is always my idea i love the, the your style of, uh, of being your uh, idea i read lots of stuff for, from from you maybe you don't know it i don't know you so well a long ago but before i make the research i uh, uh, talk with the the persons i like to read a lo little about you i read lots of stuff that i don't want to put it here i think uh, is lots of important stuff uh, that we put and post uh, and uh, I think you have a good uh, position, and uh, I think that uh, you are, we are in the right uh, uh, direction. Uh, but it's difficult; it's a difficult road. And uh, if there is not uh, lots of persons like you, then uh, that is not going to happen. I have three kids, and uh, they are growing; they are coming adults, and I want them to be uh, open with me they are the best father of the world i think <laughs> i'm always very easy and uh for me looking at you as a positive person that is always enjoying the rides uh, having uh, the best time of your life not just riding with friends with your everything i think your instagram says everything and mm -hmm. uh, uh if lots of people don't listen what you talk uh, when you are doing something and uh, if the people sometimes listen what you are uh, people are saying uh, and the inspiration and everything i think that way uh, we lose sometimes of the videos and i listen the the back uh, uh, the people are in the back and are, are, are talking with you and i think that is important for us and uh, he, I, like in this video, I know that lots of people don't see your leg and your leg is full of blood. <laughs> <laughs> but if you ask to 90%, nobody noticed that you have your leg, uh, left leg in blood. Is right yeah. or wrong? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Coming back from Float Life Fest, my, my, my legs were just like a battle zone of, of, uh, of blood and scabs and scars. <laughs> Do you think we need more stuff like this, more events like this, more uh, interaction with persons like this? Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, I mean, I that it's something that I feel incredibly lucky to be able to have um, have experienced. Is you know just going to Float Life Fest, going to Stokebridge, just like being able to like not only interact and ride with so many other one wheelers, but also just like doing so while also getting away from from like i love this know, picture regular life right like you don't oh, you, this is my video <laughs> take away um all of the stress of of uh your job and everything mm -hmm. and just like go hang out with other one wheelers and you know particularly like float life fest where um um it it really felt just like a little like you know because it was it was on like this campground and so everyone there is mm -hmm. just like it feels like this little town of just one wheelers and it was just like so it was such a good weekend. Oh my God. Um, yeah. But I, yeah, I think, I mean, I think it, it, I would love to be able to, I would love to see like more accessibility for these events, like, you know, more events across the country. So it's easier to get to. Um, and in hopefully... New York is difficult. Do you yeah. I mean, so I'm, much? I'm really surprised. Like we don't really have, um, we don't really have like like there's there's not a lot of of like big group events in New York or even like in this section of the East mm -hmm. Coast. Um, it's like more to get rides. The, yeah, I mean, we definitely got group rides. Yeah, but but even compared to like like there there are there's the the big group rides on Friday nights um, mm -hmm. in Manhattan, but unfortunately, um, I don't get off work by the time they start, so I usually don't don't get to go to those ones. Mm -hmm. um, but is a mix is a mix or more one wheelers uh, mostly one wheels yeah okay yeah how, how, how big is the group of you guys in uh in the in new york now um i'm not sure i don't i don't really keep up with the manhattan group all that much but um we've got about um your two groups that you are more active you are in uh, yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, more, I'm more involved in the in in the uh in the brooklyn group um okay. yeah so we've got about 60 people in our discord um and about I don't know, probably 10, 15 people that will show up Active. occasionally. Usually our rides are about like five to mm -hmm. 10 people. Um, yeah. yeah. And you, you, I, I, you... I like that nice, like slower pace because we, especially with, with riding in the, in the big loop around Prospect Park, um, it's, it's really conducive to like being able to keep up, like, like have people of, of all like riding uh, skill and like, um, 
experience be able to keep up because we can just like you know do it do a little techie section and like mm -hmm. if somebody isn't comfortable with that they can like ride on the on the paved path around and and it's you know it's easy like if someone's like okay cool like i'm on a pint i need to go back and charge like we're just in the park still so they can just zoom mm -hmm. over um so i think that that makes it a little bit more um accessible and friendly to everyone regardless of their like riding level um more so than like the big group rides where it's like a point to point um mm -hmm. where people are just like zooming down the street going <laughs> 25 miles an hour yeah, um which i i mean i i love that but i also like you know i'm like that i guess that that's one of the things that i am trying to push for like the most in one wheeling in general is just like like getting more people riding and i think i think um like you know one of the biggest barriers to entry right now is just the price because um e i mean even now that we're able to like do DIY boards with Vesk and stuff. Like it's still a, a significant amount of money to like get started. It's expensive with. tool. Yeah, for real. And and you know m most of my friends are like poor queers that live here and and yeah. and are like you know and and like a thousand bucks for for something that they're yeah. not gonna use every day is like you know a, a, like you know a significant. It's not easy. Money. Yeah. It's not so easy. I so I mean I think yeah so so the the main thing with um um. Uh, with, yeah, with that, I mean, with Vesk particularly, I, I'm uh, like, it, you know, it's easy to, to go make a like multi thousand dollar board that's like a race monster, like, mm -hmm. you know, keep up, go 30 miles an hour, go mm -hmm. 40 miles an hour, whatever. Um, but I think like one of the things that intrigues me the most about Vesk and the thing that I've been like developing is just like, how can we convert boards to Vesk the lowest price possible? Um, and uh, I've gotten it down so I, I can reliably do a pint conversion for uh, under two hundred dollars in um, in parts costs, and same with an XR, same with a GT. So like if, if uh, two hundred dollars. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. No, it's it's pretty wild um, because the like with a U box, like either a seventy five or either an eighty volt or the hundred volt, those are like one hundred fifty bucks. And then you can keep all the stock enclosures, stock battery, stock harness, stock motor. So if you take a working, like if you give me a working one wheel, like with two hundred dollars worth of parts, like you can get a Vesk, right? And, and I think that's 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 like the thing that is is the most intriguing to me. I'm like I'm like sick. Like like this is a incredibly viable upgrade path for anyone who has a um, who has a working one wheel right now, and like. You know, for less than a the price of a new set of rails, you can get an a, unlock a completely new experience that you know that wouldn't be possible otherwise, um, or, or at least without spending multiple thousands of dollars on a new on a new one wheel from Future Motion. So, um, I mean, that I think I think and it's you know, expensive. In, yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So that, that, in that, Europe. yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, yeah, especially if you're all over there because the you know be, having to ship things back like you know if if something breaks and that, that was the thing i was touching on earlier it's like you know i like yeah i i just like w when i was writing a future motion board like i i was just always anxious like, i was like oh no like what if this board breaks like you know i like if if it if it breaks i'm screwed and like much less so much less screwed here than than you are in, in europe because of yeah. you know how extremely expensive it prohibitively expensive it, it is to like ship stuff back and forth um and and just the fact that you know future motion like won't let you repair your own stuff which you know um but yeah so when you know when i first vest my first board i was like oh my god it feels like i own my one wheel for the first time in my life <laughs> like like in the, in the four years that i was riding i'm like whoa sick because like you know now i'm like okay whatever like you know i'm i'm like not as worried about about like making sure it's like super duper waterproof because i'm like you know like worst case like a component breaks like i can just fix it myself you know or just like replace that one component or whatever and it's just like cool like i'm chilling you know and it's just, it's just like that level of of like uh i don't know just like familiarity with with your vehicle and just that extra connection and just being able to be like yeah cool like you know i i got this like i could all i can like keep working on this make it better like it'll and just like the board just keeps getting better and better as time goes on because like you there's new <laughs> stuff that comes out you can put new components in you can yeah it's great you're always learning you're always updating yeah. everything is, uh, I, I i just want to add there is a question here i think it's important because there is shown a, a, a long time we don't have a person from uh, new york and uh, here and i think it's important how, how can you uh, describe it 
uh, the day in New York, always everything with the PVs, everything is nice or the uh, no problems. How is that now in New York? Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's great here. I I um, out of everywhere. I mean, I yeah, I've lived in Colorado and uh, San Francisco and Oakland, and then here, and then like I've I've ridden uh, in Virginia and in Florida and. Um, I, I guess a couple other places, but out of all the places, like New York City is by far the best place to ride, in my opinion, um, in terms of like commuting and in terms of 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 just like riding in the city. Um, it was it was really shocking to me going down to Florida because, like, you know, I like I'm 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 quite interested in like urban design and um, like city infrastructure and stuff like that, and um, I think that. Uh, you know, I, I think like there's there's a lot that's that's wrong with the U.S., <laughs> but um, the the lack of the lack of um, or just the car centric in infrastructure here is like really a, a really terrible thing to have to live with. Um, and the fact that like, you know, down in Florida, it was like there's no there's no divided bike lane. It's just like, you know, if and there's car like huge, huge wide roads and cars are going like 50 miles an hour. And so I was like trying to get home <laughs> one night by myself and I was like. I legitimately feel scared for my life right now, just like <laughs> trying to one wheel home. And like, that's, that's never a feeling that I've experienced here in New York because like, first off, there's, there's a lot of dedicated bike infrastructure, which is fantastic, you know, separated bike lanes, bike paths, stuff like that. Um, but then also like, you know, since, since there's, since everything's so small and close together and there's just like, you know, so much just like random stuff on the streets and mm -hmm. people double parked and all this stuff, potholes, construction, like cars are going so slow that like you can easily keep up with, with them, like with the traffic on a one wheel. Mm -hmm. And, and so it, it doesn't like, and, and there's so many people walking and so many people on bikes and scooters and everything here that drivers are just like much, much more aware of, of, uh, people who aren't in cars. Um, and so like it, it, it just, it feels like a really safe city to ride around in, which I'm super grateful for. Um, and also just because everything is so compact, like even on my pint, pint X, like with the, you know, 12 miles of range or something, like I can get to anywhere I need to. And on the XR with, you know, over 20 miles of range now that I can. And is, is it to charge? Get there yeah. Back. Lots of points is uh, lots of points for you to charge and the PPR is easy. Maybe uh, you yeah. find on the streets or if you go to a, a shop or something like that to charge it, it's easy. Everybody's uh, cool about that. Yeah, um, I think uh, definitely in like restaurants and, and cafes and stuff like that, um, there is uh, it, it's it's pretty easy to find a place to like go like, you know, go mm -hmm. sit at a coffee shop or go sit at a restaurant and charge um, people like all of the, the shop owners are, are pretty are pretty cool about that. Um, the public, like the publicly accessible outlets are a different story. <laughs> um, there's mm -hmm. like, there's, there's some in various locations and, you know, we try to mark them on the one wheel app, but, um, they, they keep getting, yeah, they keep getting like locked up or, um, torn out. And so I, th I think, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's something that I, I, I wish that there was more of a, um, more of an effort spent on. Uh, making public charging available, um, both but both for um, you know PEVs, but also just like as yeah. a community service, because I think I think power is really something that should just be publicly accessible. For us, I'm going to tell you because there is somebody here is uh, telling something that is I think is very important. Uh, we have the best bike lines and bikes in infrastructure in Holland, but illegal for the PEVs. So Germany. I live in Germany. I come from Portugal. Germany has one of the best places for you to ride because you have separated from the roads for you to go in bikes, for you to go walking, and you can travel all the country and you don't have no problem. So, and they're coming bigger and bigger, but you cannot ride PVs. You cannot ride not all the PVs. You can ride uh, A scooters in some countries, some countries you cannot ride. So, most of them. So, we have the best in purchase and uh, Belgium, lots of countries, and we cannot use it. What we have and i think that is very sad do you think in usa you are talking about new york and going to uh, california do you think uh, that is something that is missing in other parts of the country that they have to update it like to have uh, more places for the pvs for the bikes for the people are walking uh putting less cars 
what is your opinion about that because here we are more less cars more bikes more stuff like that yeah yeah absolutely i mean i i i really hate cars <laughs> like i i think that i think that cars like you know if, if you look at, at specifically in the u.s i mean you know don't get me wrong like i, I love driving like, it's, it's I, perfect it, it you know yeah. it, it's one of those things where i'm like like I, i really enjoy cars like i love working on cars um and i like cars as a utility but i hate how much we have to rely on cars here in the u.s specifically um, all around the world not just there yeah <laughs> around yeah, the yeah, world. yeah but um yeah i mean it's just such a terrible mode of transportation like it's it, it it's inefficient incredibly inefficient it's it takes up so much space parking is a nightmare like like the fact that the fact that like you know you go to a shopping center and there's three times as much land area taken up just for parking your car as there is for like going to the store you're trying to go to it makes no sense like if we had if we had decent rail infrastructure people would have a completely different life because they could and that's that's what i love so much about new york is like you know anywhere everywhere else i've lived and like most places in the us like you know if someone invites you out to like they're like oh yeah let's go to this bar tonight like you got to be like okay like you know how ca how can i get there like is there a bus or a train that goes there if there is like it's definitely not going to run late enough to get me home so now i have to like figure out can i afford an uber can i like do i have a friend that can be the dd like here it's just like do i want to go or not and i'm like cool yeah let's go and then just hop on the train like take the one wheel whatever mm -hmm. um But yeah, I mean, I, I think that like, you know, the fact that the fact that like most of the like the, there's there's so much of the uh, the budget of of like public infrastructure that's put towards road use. And and it's it's really such an interesting concept because it's like, you know, it's like the road infrastructure in the U.S. is like one of the only things that we have socialized because I mean, it, like the concept of having a shared highway and road infrastructure that we all pay for but that some of us use less than others and that like you know rural rural roads get used much less than urban roads but we're all collectively paying for this infrastructure um like why can't we do the same thing with public transportation and you know the answer is that oil lobbying like oil and gas lobbyists have bought the government and like that's a whole thing and it's a mm -hmm. different story there but yeah. um but yeah i mean i think that it's really a shame that we, that we don't have um that same level of like communalized um like the <laughs> that we all like you know put a, put our resources together to like build good infrastructure for to get around that's not cars yeah yeah uh, uh, the, the other thing is like this the the trains meet metro you can ride with the uh, pvs in uh, in uh, uh, in uh, new york um yeah I, i i mean i definitely like take the one wheel on the train sometimes um Uh, no issue. Uh, yeah. What's that? It's not wish that you don't have no issues with that because here no. it's illegal for you to take it because it was one day one uh, a one uh, I think a scooter was with that problem and then they say oh, from now on you cannot uh, take a electric device in the metro or <laughs> in the trains. Bummer. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, that to me that that doesn't make sense and and I think that no makes no sense. That. What's that? No make no sense. Yeah, <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> yeah, no, I and I, you know, that's like one of those things that is like, you know, theoretically about safety, but really, the, like the impact is is that it just makes it more difficult to get around. It just makes it more difficult to get around, and and so it's like I I, I don't think that there should be. Uh, yeah, I don't think that we should be encouraging policies that <sighs> makes it more difficult to get around. Yeah, that is that in twenty twenty four. Come on. Uh, yeah. we need uh, other ideas and, and new improvements and we have to be more open and uh, create uh, uh, better stuff and uh, don't think about the guys uh, behind the politics who, who insert the money for them to do the laws they want that is the big problem we have around the world but that is a, another discussion that I have nothing to do with you mm -hmm. uh, I just want to say uh, first of all uh, Uh, I don't want to make this video very big. I want everybody to see you. I think you are very important for your community. You come from a, a beautiful uh, town, one of the uh, starters of the PVs of the world. You come from Brooklyn. Brooklyn is very beautiful uh, too. Is uh, one of the best places. I have good friends from there. And uh, I just want to say, first of all, thank you so much for coming here, for sharing a little about you. I just want to show before we continue and uh, go to the last stage, I just want to say to everybody, guys, uh, some 
Sunday, we're going to have here the Danish uh, One Wheel Games is going to happen in August. They're going to talk about what they're going to ha do it for the f they are doing for the third time, but official one is this year. Official, they're going to make a big event there. And if you are in Europe or you are around the world and you, maybe you are in holidays in Europe, go there and listen to him. Maybe you can come and visit him. I think he has a beautiful idea. The idea is not going to be race, it's going to be more. Uh, 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 they are more focused in. Uh, skills uh, in your one wheel to show it is a different different type then we're going to go one day later we have here the float of the isles that is from the guys from big mountain big downhill that you have to have at least 80 percent of your battery not more because when you're coming downhill that is so you're going to uh, <laughs> get close to 100 percent of the battery that's why they always say that you can see it last year was crazy guys taking speeds of uh, 60 55 uh, kilometers per hour that is around 34 to 37 going downhill I, s I have videos of guys falling i was behind in a uc filming and it was like crazy and uh, uh these guys who don't have no stop no limits and that's why i love the name no limits right but i want to make a question you who make so much stuff with your one wheel what do you <laughs> use as protections <laughs> mm. um it depends on whether i'm riding in the summer or the winter um uh if it's if it's cold enough out um well i guess like you know i, I always wear a helmet i always wear gloves um with wrist guards so it's either either the the function full finger gloves or the function half finger gloves depending on how warm it is outside and how sandy i'm trying to get <laughs> um and then uh yeah and then in the winter or when it's cold enough out i wear um i have a pair of um padded carhartt overalls um that are like you know they're super thick they're nice denim or um what's that canvas or something like that like but whatever material it is like I, i've taken spills over 20 miles an hour in those pants and they haven't even ripped like abraded through the surface so that, that's that's pretty good slide protection um and then in the summer um or you know, if I'm not wearing like a thick jacket, I'll I'll do elbow pads and knee pads. And uh, if I'm yeah, if I'm going out to go on a ride, I'll usually wear butt pads because um, you know falling. I've had a couple of direct falls on my butt, especially doing uh, tricks, and that is that's not a fun recovery. Is, I you um, see the fall from you there. Was yeah, a, not, was a pretty yeah. one. That is the worst ones. <laughs> that is. <laughs> yeah, and then shin, shin guards as well. I have I have just some some like soccer uh, shin guards, mm -hmm. um, okay. and the, the, I just put those under my socks, like long socks, and. Um, and yeah, th those are great because, um, you know, having a, especially for doing skate park riding, um, having a, you know, 30 pound board come whack you in the shins is not particularly fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. We never know what, what direction is going to go the board. But yeah. uh, and then the other thing, we in the beginning when you start, uh, we forget about that. You talk about the fly fins, you put it in a pint. Yeah. Today you don't use it. Or something it why do you it change the type of writing yeah um i like i i still um i still so yeah the, the fly fins in particular um uh i i really like those for um on the pint just for 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 like particular types of trick writing yeah you use, um, the, you use it on uh you use it on the uh what's the name on the you don't oh, use the completely fine you, yeah 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 um yeah yeah that, that was really fun um you know and just being able to have that extra extra level of of grip um for doing stuff like um like varial drops or or just like jumping between stuff um on the xr i uh have a set of overlanders that i, I use for trail riding um yeah there you go um yeah I, I i really like the wider stance um so something like the overlanders what do you think about the or, new ones the smaller the, ones the new, you think is better. The owls, yeah. These these the new ones is smaller, not so big. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. These ones. Yeah, the you owl lifter. Tried? Um, uh, I haven't tried yet, but um, uh, Colton was talking to me about them when I when I met him at uh, Footlay Fest, and uh, yeah, they they look really nice. Um, I think the uh, my, like yeah, the um. Uh, but yeah, just being able to have have that extra, um, but both both as a, a way to like lift the board up when you jump, but also more importantly, just to have that extra stability, um, especially when riding trails that are off camber, 
Uh, and it's it's just so much easier to like correct from uh, like a potential spill when you're like locked in like that because you can like you're not relying on gravity to be your only connection with the board. Like you then have the ability to to like get the board back in line with how you want it to be versus having to like follow it through when it when it goes over a um like a bump sideways do, do you feel do you feel safe uh using them oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah i know i know uh, i know some people talk about like oh my god like i wouldn't want to ride around with those because like what if i what if i fall and then my ankle gets caught or something like that but yeah, yeah, um course. i've never had a i've never had a incident where i've gotten injured from the from the from the overlanders or flight fins mm -hmm. um uh, it's yeah you know, like an ankles are pretty flexible <laughs> so like as soon as you start going down then um like it'll you know your your foot will just flex and like pull right out so um but yeah i mean for street riding i i like to ride just plain pads because um i yeah i, I like doing stuff like body burials and um just having my free feet more free um and not having any uh, like any any additional things to worry about um on like on, yeah so for for just commuting riding around town um, most group rides and stuff like that i'll, I'll just rock for just straight paths with no no lifters and you 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 ride very very good do you think uh, for you like the flight fins is more for you to use uh a small jumps small uh spaces and uh the offlanders more for speed off-roading and uh to feel this safety how the how, how can you describe the two of them for you because you have the experience with the two of them sure yeah um yeah, I mean it's hard to do a direct comparison because the uh, flight fins I've only used on the on the pint, um, and then the overlanders I've only used on the XR. Um, but yeah, I mean the the flight fins on the pint, I definitely feel I feel like the the flight fins on the like the inner flight fins um, uh, are are to me feel much more trick oriented, and then the overlanders feel much more tra trail oriented. Um, it, I mean, it's definitely like, you know, that you see people riding trails with flight fins all the time. Um, and I'm not saying that they're not good for that, but, but for me, the, um, uh, like just like the, the stance of being able to mm -hmm. like pull your legs in, uh, is more conducive to being able to jump yeah. with the board. Um, and then having the wide stance that the overlanders give you is, is more conducive to, uh, like a stable stance mm -hmm. for trail riding. Yeah, of course. When you are open, when you open more your legs, you have then that, that feeling that you can go off road and jumping, and then you have your feet more. Then with the fly fins, you have to have closer. You don't have that. Uh, I don't know how to describe. I have fly fins. Uh, there is a new generation, the Falcons, but we are mm -hmm. seeing lots of stuff now new coming out. Lots of yeah. uh, types for the people who wants to go faster and speeding and lots of things there is lots of good types before we just have to stick by the fly fins today we have lots of good stuff there and uh, that is a good thing for all of us uh what do you think the future what <laughs> is you as a uh you said that that maybe in the beginning uh, i was thinking maybe i'm going to like it and later on i'm going to uh maybe i'm going to change to something today you have close to what five years riding how many years do you have now Five yeah, years. 2019, 2020, yeah. 21, 22, 23. Yeah, 20, close to five or, years. Yeah, yeah, close to five close. years. Um, so yeah. five years riding. Is this uh, something that I'm going to see you in uh, maybe five years again? And having oh, a yeah. new interview no, I'll, I'll with you? I'll be riding in five years. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm yeah, I, I have I have zero doubts. Like th this is like 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 one of the things that I am that I'm like, like one of the only things in my life that I'm confident about is that like I will always be riding a one wheel until the day I die. Like that, yeah. It's it's, it's do you try it's other problem. PVs? Do you um try yeah, I've, I've, I've tried um I've tried Eastgate. Um I, I, I never really was I, I never really got into skateboarding, so Eastgate's mm -hmm. never really, you know, held much interest for me. Um, I, I've tried a couple of different EUCs and, um, like they were definitely really fun. Uh, I could see myself getting, I like, you know, if I had unlimited time and unlimited money, I would definitely have uh, a couple EUCs as well, but I, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so just expensive. like, you know, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I, I think that, you know, it's mostly it like the time, the limited time factor is, is the, is the is the thing that like, you know, is ultimately like the most um, limiting because like, you know, I'm, I'm like, cool, I have some free time. What am I going to do? And uh, it's always one wheeling. <laughs> like, I always just want to go one wheel. That I, is I something that, that, 
yeah. that is something that you make uh, each day you write every day uh definitely not every day but i try to write as much as possible i i uh like anytime i'm going anywhere i i commute on the one wheel so you know mm -hmm. a, a lot of times i'll ride um like you know almost every day but um most of them are most of the rides are like shorter rides but um but yeah then then uh i try to i try to ride uh like i'm going bigger rides every weekend if i can yeah so i just want to say first of all it was a pleasure to have you here you are fantastic i hope that when i visit again uh, new york i come and visit you to go yeah. to a ride with your group i think uh, uh is amazing in a moment i cannot because i i broke my Kavikla again. Oh no! Nobody knows. Right. It's the first time I show it. Yeah. Oh yeah. My, <laughs> one of my partners uh, broke their their collarbone um, last yeah. May. It's and, not uh, easy. Yeah. Uh, I I just want to say uh, was amazing to have you here. I think you have lots to to talk about. I think you your friends around you are very happy to have you because it's not easy to find a person who wants to uh, we talk, call it magic hands who can help <laughs> us sometimes when we have some problems and uh, <laughs> who can take care of us because lots of persons I know the out, the out there they don't buy a, a vest or they don't create a vest because they don't know how to do it and close to them they don't have nobody who can help them uh mm -hmm. to go in the right way because always the beginning is the the worst one to make the settings and everything but if yeah. you have some and there is lots of videos out there i think they have to be very thankful for you to be there but the most important thing is your smile always positive energy i love it that i think you bring lots of good stuff to our communities and uh i want to thank you so much for coming but before we go like always i want to leave you with the last words for your community for the persons who come to see this video later on or for the persons who are here doesn't matter the last words is always for you i want to make this video bigger but we are close to one hour 30 and most of the people when you make big videos nobody has well i don't want to see so many hours yeah uh, the important thing is for us to share a little from you and it was a pleasure to meet you and second of all thank you so much for accepting the invitation i think that you bring a lot for the table and i love to see uh creative persons in this community i love this i do this for the community not any and anything else i just want to have fun and uh, you are one of them you are in this group of people who <laughs> just want to have fun and enjoy life i leave you with the last words all right well thank you so much yeah thank you for having me on um uh, yeah, I guess last words. I I would say um, specifically relating to Vesk, uh, I think that you know it can definitely be quite intimidating uh, trying to get into Vesk for the first time. But um, I think it, you know it's it's like all of these skills are are things that can be can be learned fairly easily, and um, and it just you know it just takes time to to get practice making good solder joints and and like figuring out you know how to cut the wires at the the right length and everything like that but um it's yeah it's definitely worth it like the, you know the amount that um the amount that you can learn by vesking a board uh about electronics about about like you know pid motor control about like all of these different topics um is like it's really incredible and and being able to have an end goal um that can like really push you to learn these things is is like for me at least that's like one of the most motivating things like you know trying to learn about um soldering just like in a vacuum where i'm just like oh like let's learn about soldering um like you know there's not not really any motivation there but like once i'm like okay cool like this is a rad project i'm gonna get to ride a one wheel after i do this like then i'm motivated to like learn those things so i would say just like you know don't don't let um any any sort of like lack of experience like stop you from trying to build a vesk because um you know there's so much there's so much support out there there's so many people that are willing to help you um and we're getting to a point now too where you know there's a lot of um there's a lot of choice in terms of components and uh and it's it's getting easier and easier to build a vesk every day so um yeah so that's i, I guess i'll leave that for the the broader community of people and then um, yeah, and then also uh, something that I'm super stoked about is um, I've helped start a group of queer one-wheel riders. Um, 
And Whoa. so if you're queer and uh, ride a one wheel and want to get connected with us, uh, we have a Discord and a um, Instagram chat. Uh, feel free to follow Float With Pride on Instagram and um, yeah, shoot a message and uh, love to get connected with um, more queer folks. Yeah, I think is this one just for us to share. I'm going to put the link later on, but is, already, is this Yeah, one? there we go. Yep. And we have the other one is the Brooklyn Wheelers, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So then the, yeah. So the other, uh, if you happen to live in New York and you want to come ride with us, um, or if you're coming to visit, um, yeah, feel free to hit us up, uh, the Brooklyn one, uh, Brooklyn one wheel crew. And, uh, we've got a discord server that you can join yeah, too. The discovery is here inside guys. Uh, if you go to the Instagram from her, uh, you're just going to see there is two links here and the two links give you directly and that way you can go if you go to the brooklyn you just have to go and you're going to see the discover that you can contact the people and maybe have a nice ride have a good time and uh, enjoy yourself meet new people uh enjoy life the best way and uh learn with each other for us to upgrade and maybe the persons here in europe or people who wants to have better vests can uh, uh, then have a better life because uh, one wheel for Europeans is very bad, is very expensive. You can yeah. imagine fast the double of the price that you guy pays in USA. Just for you wow. to understand, that yeah. that don't is not a joke. Is the reality. I tried yeah. to speak with one of guys up there. He tried to make me a discount and was with a discount and shipping and taxes and everything. I come close to four thousand dollars. Wow. That is yeah. too much. That's, that is yeah, not a joke. Yeah. That is a much, too much. So I just want to say to you, first of all, thank you so much. I hope that we see us very soon again and uh, right. have a, maybe a little chat and update for everybody out there. Don't forget, always ride fast, but very important, safe and have fun. And don't forget, lots of videos, lots of photos show what you are doing for the community that is going to be making, is going to be a good inspiration for all of us to get in our PVs and go for a ride and make a new video and a new photo for everybody to see it. Thank you awesome. so much. Of course. Have a good Thank time, you. Man. Guys, bye-bye.